I've got straight up 11. What have you got? I do, too. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we want to welcome everybody to our call today with Ed Newton, CPA and president of Newton Financial Network. The title of today's call is Tax Laws for 2014 are finally final. And if you're listening on the phone, uh, if we have questions at the end of the call, we're going to open up the phone line so Ed can answer any of the questions that you have. Or if you're listening via the webcast on the Internet, there is a box towards the bottom of the page uh, titled Submit Your Question for the event here. Just type in your question and click the Submit button, and we'll check for those messages at the end of the call and try and answer those too. If you are not already a client of Ed's, he's originally from Huntington, West Virginia, has a degree in accounting from Virginia Tech and a master's degree from Liberty University. Ed landed at Arthur Anderson and Company in their tax department and then began his firm in 1977. He is a CPA and a certified financial planner and is uniquely positioned to help clients achieve and sustain a worry-free retirement. And if you don't know him, you or no, I'm sorry, if you do know him, and it sounds like a lot of people do, Ed has also been a commercial pilot for a major airline since 1982. And his current weekend routes are to London, England, and Frankfurt, Germany, and recently added the title of captain to his uh, his wings. So, Ed, good morning, and welcome to the call. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, thank you for that. And, uh, yes, it's uh, in fact, on January 4th was my 33rd anniversary with the airline. So it's amazing. 33 years, quote-unquote, with one airline, yet it's been three different names. So that's that's the nature of the airline business, I guess. <clears throat> well, as uh, those of you that were on the call a couple minutes before we got started heard, uh, Jeff and I were talking about some things. And just uh, two things I'd like to say before I really get into it. One, uh, to my knowledge, we don't have any Ohio State fans that are on the call. But if we do, I want to congratulate Ohio State on their championship, national championship last night. It was a uh, Great game. It was a great year for them. They just uh, did marvelous. And oh, wait a minute. They did lose one game, though, didn't they? That's right. They, who did they lose to? Oh, yes. They lost to Virginia Tech. Sorry, I had to get my own little cheap shot in there. The only team to beat the national champions this year was my alma mater. Um, Anyway, so that, and then the other thing that, again, if you heard us talking about H uh, and R Block, uh, talking about the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, as it's uh, called most of the time, uh, and I have heard this, but haven't seen anything, but it gives you an idea of what's involved with Obamacare as it will affect personal tax returns this year. It's my understanding that H and R Block has indicated that if they prepare your return and you have to complete the, they have to complete for you, the three forms that are dedicated strictly to Obamacare, that their fees for those three forms will be a whopping $245 uh, additional to everything else of their return. So just that just gives you an idea even for the H&R Block type folks, uh, they're realizing that this is going to be quite a bit of work. All that being said, I did want to chat today about, as um, Jeff said, that the 2014 finalization is final for the tax extenders. And I just uh, really like the way they named the actual act. The official name of the act is the Tax Increase Prevention Act of 2014. So um, they even get um, creative with the way they word the, um, the bill itself. It would be relatively easy to say the webinar we had last month, if you listen to it, most of those items got extended and we could end the call, but that wouldn't be any fun for any of us. So let me just uh, go down through some of these. I want to first talk about the um, uh, the business side of it, and I'm going to just highlight some of the more uh, common items that will be uh, effective or that affect a business uh, for the year 2014. And so if you made business decisions over the past year on the assumption that the tax breaks were going to be expended, extended, 
which is what we'd advised our clients to do, then the bet has paid off because most of the provisions that were expiring as of December 31st, 2013, have been extended to 2014, but these provisions all ended on December 31st, 2014. So that means 2015, we're in the same boat uh, going forward that we really don't know what's going to happen with some of these large provisions and important provisions for business as well as in a minute when we get to the individual. <clears throat> the two biggest items for business that I want to bring up, number one is the one that we refer to as the Section 179 deduction and those of you that are have your own business or do any um, work have any work with um, with a business will know that section 179 states that a business may deduct the 100% of their capital cost of new equipment until it was extended for the year 2014 the maximum was $25,000. In previous years, uh, 2013 specifically, it had been $250,000. And this is one of the things, I'm sorry, uh, in 13 it was $500,000. And this is one of the things that did get extended. So our business clients will be able to deduct up to half a million dollars this year uh, on their return for any capital items that they may have purchased during the year. The second item that I think is uh, very important to businesses is the 50% bonus depreciation. Again, uh, through the year 2013, companies could take up to 50% of the cost of capital equipment that they didn't take under 179 as a bonus depreciation. That, again, expired in 2013, but has been now extended for purchases of equipment made prior to January 1st, 2015, and those uh, items of equipment had to be placed in service by the last day of 2014 as well. I'm just going to run down a couple more of the tax provisions that were extended through 2014 for businesses. Uh, one is the employer wage credit for activated military reservists. Uh, so any of our business clients that are on the call or that may listen in later, if you do have any active, activated military reservists, we do need to talk about that as there are some credits for that. They also extended the work opportunity tax credit, as well as the 15-year straight line depreciation cost recovery for qualified leasehold improvements, restaurant buildings and improvements, and qualified retail improvements. So again, for clients in those industries and those businesses, we also did get the shortened time that we can depreciate uh, capital items. Let me move now to the individuals and run down these. Again, most of these are relatively minor in the effect that they have on your tax return, but certainly can uh, provide some additional relief for taxes um, for the year 2014. The law did extend several deductions and credits that had expired in 2013. For those of you that live in non-income tax states, and I know we have a couple of folks on the line that uh, live in states that do not have a state income tax, the ability of those folks to deduct their sales, general sales and use tax expired in 2013, and that has now been extended through 2014. And unless I say otherwise through the rest of this call, you can just take it that these extensions are good only through December 31st of 2014. 
So they really don't help you much in your planning for 15 other than to, for me to say the same thing I said before, and that is that I believe these will be extended as well at some point during the year. <clears throat> so the again, the state and local general sales tax deduction is something that's available to those, uh, and I really should uh, – change my remarks a little bit. It's available to anyone. It's just that if you live in a state that has a state income tax, it's almost always more beneficial to deduct the state income tax than it is the general sales tax. And that is an either or, so it's not a both. Uh, another good one that uh, uh, certainly will affect some folks and be advantageous is the above the line deduction for qualified tuition and education expenses. Uh, extended through 2014, depending upon your income threshold, uh, you can deduct $4,000 of qualified education expenses during the year that are made for yourself, your spouse, or any of your dependents. Um, so that, and again, that's above the line. By above the line, I mean it goes on the front page of the return, if you will, and does not affect your uh, itemized deductions in any way. That does get phased out depending on income, but uh, as we do your tax returns, we can talk about those specific numbers if it, if it does affect you. <clears throat> this is one, again, some of these are so minor, they're almost not worth talking about, but I definitely want you to know about them in case they do affect you. The credit for energy efficient existing homes, um, there's a 10% non-business energy property credit for the purchase of qualified energy efficient improvements to existing homes. And if we were to stop there, that would uh, certainly be very good news for a lot of folks. The downside is there's a lifetime limitation of $500. That's the most you can get out of it over the entire lifetime. So if you've already taken the credit on some things before um, and it's more than $500, you won't be able to get any additional credit uh, for this year. <clears throat> uh, another provision that I think will help quite a few folks uh, with homes and mortgages on their home, and that is those folks that had to purchase mortgage insurance premiums. Again, that was slated to end in 2013, that if you had mortgage insurance premiums, you would not be able to deduct those on your Schedule A along with your mortgage interest. However, that has been extended through the end of 2014. Uh, another small one, and I think this is, you know, parenthetically, it's, I think it's an absurd small amount uh, that they allow for educators our teachers uh, can deduct up to $250, again, off the front page of the return with that, without any regard to whether they itemize deductions or not. And if both people in a married couple are teachers, they can take 500 That should be, in my opinion, a much larger number, but that has been extended through 14 as well. Uh, another one that could be very beneficial to folks, if you'll recall, we've talked before on here, and I've talked to some of you uh, certainly one-on-one, -on -one, about the discharge of qualified personal residence indebtedness. Uh, so if a person had a mortgage on a home and they worked out an agreement where the mortgage company forgave part of that indebtedness, then that indebtedness without this provision would have required that the person include that amount of income in their, um, or it's called income, <clears throat> into their tax return for the year. So let's just say you had a uh, house that was worth $400,000 and you had a $600,000 mortgage on it. You went to the bank and said, look, either whether it's a short sale, however it was, and the bank says, okay, we're going to forgive the $200,000 of mortgage that you owe us. That would be additional income to the person. However, again, extended for the year 2014 and 2014 alone is 
the fact that if it's on your principal residence, you will not have to pay tax on that phantom income, if you will. Uh, Tax-free distributions from IRA for charitable purposes. Uh, again, the law was passed on December 19th, so it really didn't give time for folks to uh, take advantage of this. But if you have a an IRA and if you were taking the required minimum distributions, uh, that means you're over 70 and a half, then you could actually have that money transferred directly to a charitable organization and it would not be reflected as income on your personal tax return. But again, those qualifying distributions had to be made before January 1st of 2015. That pretty much covers the changes for the year. I didn't think, and it looks like it's taken us about 15 minutes to go through those. I thought in addition to what we had originally talked about on here, I thought I would just run through a couple of other things for you that uh, might be of interest, uh, such as the income tax filing rates, what the uh, tax rates are, a little breakdown there, and then talk about some of the other items. So let me just uh, quickly say that uh, for single individuals, you are in the 25% bracket all the way up to a taxable income of $89,350. For married taxpayers filing joint returns, that goes all the way to $148,850 for the 25% bracket and $226,850 for the 28% bracket 405,000 for the 33%, 457 for the 35%, and anything above 457,600 will be at the 39.6. Just run through that for you quickly. Uh, Long-term capital gains rates for anyone that's not in the 39.6% rate your long-term capital gains rate remains at 15% for this year. If you are in that 39.6% rate, then your capital gains are 20% instead of the 15%. Um, another item that will hit a lot of our clients this year is uh, two items. One is the net investment income tax and that is an additional tax of 3.8% that is placed on your net investment income, or, uh, and that net investment income uh, would also, is limited to your adjusted gross income. So, but if you're married filing jointly, anything over, <clears throat> excuse me, $250,000, we'll pay that additional 3.8% tax. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, just to give you a little bit of other information that sometimes we don't think about, the self-employment tax rate for this year, uh, and has been for some time, is 15,000, excuse me, 15.3%, um, and the wage base for the year 2014 was 117,000. Uh, just to reiterate a couple of things we've talked about before, personal exemptions and itemized deductions are again being limited. They started being limited in 2013 based on your income, and that continues into 2014 as well. So a person that uh, does itemized deductions, if your income is $305,000 or more, you will lose uh, some of your itemized deductions. And then the uh, last thing that I thought we'd chat about very briefly is just talking about the 2015 pension plan limitations. For those of you that have 401k plans, you'll be able to set aside $18,000 for the year 2015 and if you're over 50, you'll be able to 
put another 6000 away, so a total of 24000 that you can put away in your 401k plan. I'm sorry, I got a cough again. Um, so those are the limitations there, um, and I think that will uh, give you an idea of what you'll be able to do for this coming year. If we do have any questions, Jeff, now would be a good time to do it. Uh, so we can open it up and see if anyone has any specific questions that I can try to answer them. Sure, Ed. The uh, lines are open, so if you're on the phone, just go ahead and speak up, and I will check on the Internet and see if we've got any questions coming through there. Ed, it's Rand yes. Clark. Hey, uh, you, you said the uh, – I, I missed the um, 401K contribution for over 50. So was it 55? Was it a total of 24000 a year now? That's in the 401K, right, Randy? Okay, good enough. Now let me let me go ahead and because this will affect some people as well, and I know I'm getting somewhat specific here, but uh, a lot of our clients are U.S. Airways pilots, and um, I will tell you that specifically for U.S. Airways pilots, um, that's all it affected this year uh, as far as U.S. Airways goes anyway, uh, <clears throat> and that is that you may have seen on your last paycheck or two that the company did not contribute the normal percentage for your retirement plan, and that's because you hit the maximum that is possible for a combined of your 401K and the pension plan that the company has for you. Okay. Yeah, Jen McEwen, two two questions. Uh, really, the first is, is personal because it's not a good good place to address it. We can do it later offline. but. Um, in the sale of the business, uh, my business, uh, and with the net amount I received, do any of the um, payments that I made for attorney's fees, legal counsel, any of that stuff deductible in any way? That, that's a, that is a good question, and I will answer it in a general way, but you asked the question, so it will apply to you. <laughs> uh, and that is yes. Those all of those costs, whether it be fees that you know you pay to us, that a person pays to us, or they pay to the attorney to have the contract drawn up and all that sort of thing, that does reduce the gain that you have on the sale. So absolutely, okay. those expenses do um, help you, if you will, in your taxes. Okay. And then secondly, you mentioned Obamacare about a number of forms to be filled out. Uh, is mm -hmm. this something that all individuals who are enjoying um, uh, affordable health care will have to do, and is there additional fees that you will be charging as well? That's a good question. In fact, it's going to affect every single taxpayer in the United States this year. Now, that wow. doesn't mean that every taxpayer will have to fill out those forms, but we will be asking each one of our clients, as, as well, I would assume, everyone else that prepares tax returns, whether an individual or everyone in the household, actually, if you were covered under a health care plan for the entire year of 2014. <clears throat> the answer to that question, if the answer to that question is yes, then my next question is, did you have that insurance at any time for the year paid through either the federal or the state exchange? And if you can answer no to that question, then we go, thank goodness we don't have to do anything else. <laughs> okay. However, if you do go even a month without any insurance, or if because of your circumstances you had to purchase the insurance on the exchange, then that's when we have to get into some of these other forms. Uh, as far as, I mean, we will be charging something for it. I, I don't see that it's going to, and, and for those that answer yes to the first question, no to the second question, I mean, there won't be any additional fees there because we're not having to do any additional work. Uh, for the other forms, if we do have to do those, it, it definitely is going to have to increase the fee because it is going to be take us longer to do it. I don't see, I don't believe that our fees would go up near that much for someone that has to do those forms. Okay, great. 
Yeah, this is Jeff. We have a question that came through the Internet. Can you tell us what the penalty of no insurance will be for individuals? What are the rules? I have heard no penalty for someone that has no insurance for under three months of 2014. I know this will not affect most of us, but someone that may be listening might be. Thank you. Absolutely. It It's real. That's, and that's the re, that question is an excellent question. And it does show up why I think H&R Block is talking about how much additional time. I wish I could tell you a flat number, but there's not one. Um, it's basically for this year, uh, for 14, it is 2% of your income. But for 2014, it's possible that that could be limited to only uh, $95 per individual. So that doesn't sound too bad but not everyone qualifies for that. I will tell you that it's the, the penalties are substantial. And for 2014, they're not quite as bad, but beginning 2015, I mean, it's, it's very onerous. Uh, when I went through an update um, seminar that I went to, we ran through a couple of generic issues and we were talking about some penalties in the neighborhood of four, five, six thousand dollars. So it can be it can be quite large. <clears throat> One thing that is interesting about that penalty is the IRS has no authority whatsoever to collect it. Uh, you know, we're talking about the U.S. government, so it shouldn't be surprising. That penalty is levied, but they do have no authority. They cannot take other uh, in other words, they can't levy your bank account and other things they can do if you just owe regular income tax. Uh, that all being said, I would say whoever asked that question on the internet, uh, you know, if you want to give me a call, I'll be more than happy to check with you know to chat with you uh, in more detail. But those are the Obamacare questions are going to be something that gets very involved and is going to take some some time to to walk through. Thanks, Ed. The lines are open again. If you have a question and you're on the phone line, just go ahead and ask it. And I'll check one more time on the Internet. I don't see any other questions, Ed. I think that was the only one. Okay. All right. Well, I hope this has been informative uh, for you. And, uh, again, if there's anything we can do to help, if you've got any questions, feel free to give us a call. Hey, Ed, can I jump in real quick? Absolutely. Did, did you want to talk a little bit about um, the, the, as the tax season starts, I think you may have something interesting for everybody that's working with you in terms of a contest or a drawing? No. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, Jeff. Uh, yes, those of you that uh, have been clients with us in the past couple of years, you'll know that Sarah Beth likes giving things away. And she is going to... Um, this year we're going to have another drawing, and we will be giving away an iPad again, the latest edition of the iPad. So I guess actually the iPad Air 2 is out now. Um, and she likes her little mini iPad, so she said if anyone wants the mini iPad instead of the iPad, we'll be glad to get you that as well. I think that has a value of about $495 or something like that. And what we're doing is – to encourage people to get their information to us earlier uh, in the year, as early as possible. If you, and Jeff, you may have to help me a little bit here. If you get it in to us before February 28th, is that right? You get three tickets. And if I'm wrong on this, I think that's it. I think it's February 28th. That um, you get three tickets for the drawing. If you get it to us by um, sometime in March, I believe, it's two tickets. And then if it's right at the end of the tax season, we still give you one ticket, and then we'll make a drawing after the end of the year. And uh, I mean, excuse me, after the end of tax season, and then award that iPad to, uh, to someone. So we do have that this year. Also, as we do every year, if uh, any clients give us a referral, of any of their friends, then 
we will also give you a credit on your tax return preparation yourself of $50 for each person. Sarah Beth has just sent me a little instant message in our system here that says also that uh, the first date for filing uh, this year is January 20th. So if anyone you know gets all their information together and brings it into us, uh, we still would not be able to file until January 20th. And then uh, if you do want to go ahead and set up your appointment, Sarah Beth, you can give her a call, 704-552-8689, or send her an email at sarahbeth at ednewtoncpa.com. And I think that um, that should take care of that part, Jeff. Super. Um, Mike? From Nashville says, "Great job, Ed. You should be a radio DJ." <laughs> oh, Harsavat, you're so funny. But thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, again, we want to thank everybody for being on the call this morning. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to call Ed and Sarah Beth at the office. Again, that number is 704-552-8689, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks everybody for being on the call. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye now.